In lesson 1.2, which is about modeling quantities, we are going to use uh, something in this first example called a ratio. Now, a ratio or a proportion simply is a situation where we have one fraction, which compares two numbers, and that's equal to another fraction. And when you have uh, two fractions that are equal, then we call those two things a proportion. Now, I could give you a simple example of two numbers that are in proportion. 2 over 3 is in proportion with 6 over 9. There's a couple of ways we can show this. First, we could reduce 6 over 9 by dividing by 3, and you would get 2 thirds, which is the same as uh, the left side of the equation. But you can also use something called cross products, where we take the top of one times the bottom of another, and it looks like this. We cross multiply, and you get 2 times 9, and it equals, and on the other side, we just take the bottom of one and multiply it by the other top, which is 3 times 6. And both of those are 18. So since their cross products are equal, then we can say that those two numbers or those two fractions are in proportion. Now we can apply this to a word problem. Here we have a picture of a totem pole and they tell me the totem pole is 90 feet high and they tell me that the, the totem pole casts a shadow 45 feet long. At the same time, some guy over here, a man that is six feet tall, cast a shadow and we don't know. The question is, how long will his shadow be? We can set up a proportion because we're going to write a pair of fractions that should be equal. When something is 90 feet tall, it casts a shadow that's 45 feet. So this was how tall it was. And this was its shadow. So since this is tall and down here is shadow, then this should be tall and this should be shadow. And the guy, the man, was six feet tall and he cast a shadow that was X. Well, if I apply the rule of cross products, I'm going to multiply 90 times X, which is 90 X. And that's going to equal six times 45 and 6 times 45 is 270 and we end up with 90x equals 270 and it's just a one step equation to isolate the variable and we get x is 3. So uh, the shadow, the man's shadow is 3 feet long. Now it kind of makes sense we can look at this and make sense of the problem that we're looking at, the visual. If I'm 90 feet tall, I cast a 45 foot shadow. 45 is exactly half of 90. So a six foot tall man should cast a shadow that's half his length at that time. So uh, half of six is three, and that makes sense. Now there's a couple other ways we could write this proportion and still have a proportion that is equal, it makes sense, and could be used to solve the problem. The last time we did it, we said that if it was 90 feet tall, it cast a 45 foot shadow, and that was the fraction 90 over 45 equals 6 over x. Well, what if I want to compare the heights of the two objects? One object was 90 feet tall, and the other one was only 6 feet tall. So that's totem pole height over man's height equals well, if this is the totem pole height, that's the man's height, then that's a totem pole. This right here should be the totem pole's shadow and the man's shadow. And notice I still get the exact same cross products. 90x equals 270 if I multiply 6 and 45. Notice this proportion is totally different than the other proportion in the first time we did this problem, but we still get the same cross products. We could also start with, I could put the man on top, six feet over 90 feet. The man's height over the totem pole's height equals the man's shadow over the totem pole's shadow. And you are still going to get the same cross products, 90x equals 270. And so that's why all those proportions are equal. And I just showed you how to write it three different ways. 
We're going to use another form of a proportion uh, in a, something called a map. We're going to use what's called a scale drawing. And a scale drawing kind of tells us, for example, you can see here on this part of the scale drawing, it says one inch and 18 miles are the same thing. So one inch on the map is really 18 miles in, in real life. And this scale factor, this right here is called the scale factor. That scale factor gives us one part of our proportion. It's important sometimes to write units in our problem so that I know which uh, units go on top or bottom of a proportion. One inch and 18 miles are the same thing on this map. And that equals another fraction. We just got to figure out what it is. Uh, we can say something like this. If one inch is equal to 18 miles, if this right here from Chicago to Evanston was one inch, we would say in, to drive there would take 18 miles. And if this is two inches, then that would proportionately be larger by twice. So if this was one inch, that would be 18 miles. Two inches would be 36 miles according to the scale factor. But they do tell me the actual distance from Chicago to Evanston is 11.25 miles. And I see a decimal. So I'm going to probably go get the calculator in a minute. Notice that over here on the fraction, inches up there, miles is down here. This is miles. It's going to go in the same place as it was here. It's going to go on the bottom, 11.25 miles. The question is asking me, how far is it on the map? Well, how many inches is it on the map? And that is an X. I don't know. Um, so if I use my cross products, I get one inch times 11.25. So that's just one uh, times 11.25. I probably don't even really need to write the one, but that equals the other cross product, which is 18 X. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 18 and I'm going to get the calculator. So let's wrap this problem up. We got 11.25 and that was going to be divided by 18 in our uh, equation. And we're going to round it off. Uh, Actually, yeah, we can keep it at 0.6. Uh, we could call it 0.63. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it uh, 0 0.625, 0 0.625 uh, inches on the map. We're going to tackle now a graphing of a proportional relationship. Now, a proportional relationship has a couple of characteristics. Uh, the first thing that a proportional relationship does is that it starts at zero. Uh, that means that in this problem, we're actually selling candles to raise money. That means if I sell no candles, I make no money. And so uh, the second characteristic of a proportional relationship is that when you graph it, it is a straight line. So we're gonna take a look at graphing a proportional relationship. Simon sold candles to raise money for a school dance. So it would seem to make sense that the more candles I sell, the more money I make. And so we're going to find the unit rate. And the unit rate means if I sold 10 candles, I made 25 bucks. The unit rate is how much money do I make for one candle? And that's a simple division problem because I made $25 for 10 candles. And if I divide that, I get $2.50 for one candle. So that's the unit rate. Once you find the unit rate, it's almost always simpler to count the graph by the unit rate. So if we make $2.50 for one candle, then we can graph this relationship. Um, money uh, almost always depends on X, meaning how much money will you raise by selling candles? You say, well, I don't know. It depends. And Y always depends on X. That's why we call Y the dependent variable. And in this case, the dependent variable is money. Money almost always will depend on something. And so we're going to count the graph. This is going to be money. Down here, uh, it's always important to label the units. This is candles. And this right there represents zero, zero. And that means if I sell zero candles, I'm going to make zero dollars. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and count this by one, two, three, 
four. We'll take the easy way out on this problem. You don't have to number every line, but you could call it two and then four, six, eight. But we're going to count those as candles. And up here, we're going to count by the unit rate. Once you know the unit rate, it really makes it easy to count the graph. So this first line is $2.50 because when I sell one candle, I make $2.50 and I'm going to put a dollar there or a dot there. My next line will be $5 because when I sell two candles, two times 250 is five bucks. And if I keep going, 750, that's what I make when I sell three candles and you can start to see the trend. Uh, this right here is $10. Uh, that's what I make when I sell four. This would be 1250. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. You could keep going if you want. Now, this is called a discrete graph, meaning I can only sell one candle or two candles or three candles. I'm not gonna draw a straight line through all these because these points in here don't exist, meaning I can't sell three and a half candles. Uh, I can sell three candles for 750 or I can sell four candles for $10, but I can't sell anything in between. So we leave them as dots. We don't connect them with a line. We just have this and it's called a discrete graph so that we'll see that word uh, periodically throughout IM1. We have to decide sometimes whether a discrete or a continuous graph is most appropriate. A continuous graph would be a straight line. This one's going to be individual dots. Let's take a look at example B. Similar problem. We're going to graph a proportional relationship. So a local store sells eight corn muffins for a total of six dollars. So if we want to find the unit rate, I want to know what the cost is. The cost, it always goes on top and it's always Y, right? So whenever we dealt with money, money always depends. So money always goes on the Y axis. And in this case, well, I guess we're selling corn muffins. So I'll just write the word muffins down there. And uh, we're probably gonna have to sell whole numbers of muffins again. So let's go ahead and number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I'll throw a nine out there too. Now let's go find the unit rate. Cost per muffin. Hmm. Well, I make $6. So $6, I'm not going to put the point zero zero for eight muffins. Six over eight is an equivalent fraction to three fourths. Three fourths sounds like three quarters and three quarters as a decimal is 0 0.75. So the unit rate is every muffin costs 75 cents each. So we're going to count the y-axis by the unit rate. So this is zero. This right here is going to be 0 0.75. And this right here is $1.50. This will be two twenty-five, dollars And then there's $3. You can count three seventy-five and four fifty. So one muffin earns 75 cents. Every time I sell a muffin, my cost goes up or my money goes up proportionally. So if I sell twice as many, I make twice as much money. If I sell three times as many, I make three times as much money. And if I sell no muffins at all, it would start at zero. So uh, I guess I could put a dot at zero, zero because the graph starts there. Four muffins will make us three bucks. Again, can't sell part of a muffin. So I'm not going to draw a straight line. I'm just going to leave it as dots. It's a discrete graph again. Uh, so we're just going to leave it as individual dots. Those are the ones that are most appropriate to this situation. And the unit rate there was 75 cents per muffin.